You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again, and today we have another show lineup for y'all today we're going to be talking to a singer and songwriter based in new york city we're going to be talking to Liv burn and we're going to also just learn about her music career her recent projects and just all about her man so welcome Liv, to the show how you doing thank you so much i'm so happy to be here thank you for having me so man you are originally from florida but you're based in new york and you're doing this music thing. So first and foremost, tell the audience a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. So I was born in Toronto, Canada, and then I grew up in South Florida, and I moved to New York City for college. I'm 20 years old. I'm in college, but doing music at the same time. I've been writing music since I was 11 years old, and only, I mean, a little bit when I was in high school i was like yeah i'll release my music this or that but i I was never really big on that because i've always used music as a sort of diary in a sense but now i feel like i'm a little more detached from the songs i've outgrown the person i was when i was writing them and i i've definitely become a lot more comfortable with sharing my art with the world and letting others hear my music and so now i will be releasing a lot of it now new york was that the actual place when you started to make music or when did did you actually start the process of getting to your music career So I've been performing since I was eight years old and writing music since I was 11. And I grew up in South Florida. So pretty much all started in South Florida. I was growing up. My parents threw me into every extracurricular you could think of. And then sort of like, whichever one sticks is the one that she likes. And I kept coming back to performing, singing and dancing. And so I've been part of this performance training group since I was a kid. So that's where a lot of my training and comfortability of making music came from is because every weekend I would, I would go to classes and I'd hang out with everyone from those groups and stuff like that. And that definitely nurtured uh, my passion for music. And when it came to your first project, what was your first official release? And tell us how that came about. Um. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. There's a, it's a little complicated. I guess my first like official release on all platforms was my song Company, which I think I released my junior year of high school, I want to say. Junior or senior year of high school, I released it. And yeah. What was that project all about? So that song is about the cycle of you meet someone, you guys start talking, flirting, and you get to know each other, and then you decide, eh, we don't really vibe that much. I can't really see a future with you. And then we move on, and then we meet someone else. And we just keep, so it's like a failed talking stage after failed talking stage. And the song talks about how Maybe it's, I don't want a relationship. Maybe it's just, I want company. I just want someone to be around me. And it's, that's why all of these talking stages fail. And with you being in the industry, did you have any people near you that were helping you produce, write, record, or were you kind of doing this all by yourself? So when it came to writing music, I was growing up at the same time when Taylor Swift was really hitting it big uh, for being both a singer songwriter. So the whole idea of writing your own music was never like a faux pas to me or something. It was always like something everyone could do. So I've always written my own music, but when it came to producing it, that was something that I was told I had to reach out to other people about. Like I said, I grew up in South Florida, so there's a plethora of incredible musicians in that area and i grew up in broward county specifically so 
you know, you got all the SoundCloud rappers, you got producers who know what they're doing with their beats and stuff like that. So I definitely had a lot of options within that. Um, but then I st- as I was working with this producer, that producer, I started to realize I could just do it myself. And so then I started doing that and I worked with a uh, the studio called Vanquish Studios. I worked with some producers um, from there that helped train me within that. And then that led me to a producer up here in New York. Uh, his name's Eric Bry. I worked with him and that was really just, <clears throat> it was more of like a training situation where I was just learning more about production, how to do it and do it well. <clears throat> and now I, I pretty much produce everything on my own. Now, when it comes to what you're doing today, you have something cooking up and it's going to be later this month in October. But what can you tease with the audience? Something that you're working on to release pretty soon in the future. Yeah, I'll announce it. I have a single coming out October 22nd called Mad at You, which I'm really excited um, to release. And it'll be the first of many releases. So who are you mad at? (laughs) (laughs) um the song actually discusses one of the first stages of getting out of a toxic relationship which is just admitting to yourself that you're upset with the way that you're being treated and that it's not right and you deserve better so that's what that's why it's called mad at you but i think I, i try to write the song in a way that you know it's authentic to myself but also broad enough where I think other people can put their own relationships into it. That was something I really tried to work on with my projects uh, that I'll be releasing in the future is that it's phrased about relationships and that can mean familial, friendship wise or romantic. And so I feel like you can apply that to any of those situations because not, it, it wasn't exclusively romantic relationships that made me, write the things that I wrote. And you, you as an artist, you mentioned that you started producing for yourself. Talk to us a little bit about that process. Were you one of those persons that went to YouTube and how you make a beat? What was that process like when you started to produce for your own self? So when I read a song, <clears throat> I already have the whole song in my head. So it's just it's very easy to write a song and to vocally produce a song because I can just get that out of my head or I can just record that or write that down um, with a snap of a finger. But when it comes to producing, I have to spend like hours at times just trying to find a a bass sound that sounds like the bass that's in my head. And so navigating that was, has always been difficult because it's time consuming. Um, And Working with other producers have just simply helped me out on finding specific plugins that are more my genre type or different ways I could edit a sound to make it more like what's going on in my head. And yeah, I, I'm still learning every day with in production. And I, I like to think that I, I get better with every song I do. And once again, we are here, right here on I Am Refocus Radio, talking to Liv Byrne. Go to her website, IamLivBurn.com. And that's spelled a little different, It's just in case you don't know. It's I-A-M-L-I-V-B-Y-R-N-E.com. Now, you are a creative mind. As an artist, you have the ability to create something from nothing and present it to the world. Um, What is the most important thing to you as an artist when you're trying to share your art with everyone? The way I like to look at things is I write a song and normally it's just lyrics, melody, and probably like a piano bass line type beat. And then within the production, I try to produce it so that it gives the lyrics and the meaning behind the song justice. And then when it comes to the visuals, I try to create them in a way that gives the song as a whole justice. And then I like to release that into the world. And then everyone could do with that. 
what they want to <laughs> do. Um, so it's it's more of just trying to capture that authentic moment that made me write the song in the first place. Because the way that I write, it's I'm an overthinker. So I write when I uh, I just need to get it out. Like it, it's just so overwhelming, or it's such an emotional situation. It's like I just need to get it out of my brain and get it onto the page. And so with every other step of the process afterwards, I just try to really sort of recreate that moment in a sense, or give that moment justice. And I love how you you the way you answered that was perfect. Cause you basically is like unpacking like a grocery bag and it's like, just no fluff, just straight to the point. I love that. When you are making music, do you ever find times where you have to, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we all have to take breaks uh, if you're in that creative space, but do you find that you have to take a lot of breaks just to kind of distance yourself from being overwhelmed? In, in the terms of when I sit down to write a song, I write the whole song right then and there. Um, I normally leave the second verse for more of a, a hindsight perspective because that's just that's how I think as a person so that's how I like to phrase my songs where it's like the second verse is just okay I've taken a few days to step back from the song this is something I want to say and it's more of a mature perspective on the situation that's being discussed in the song <clears throat> uh, you so, mentioned, oh, I'm sorry <clears throat> oh sorry I was just going to say, like, uh, as far as writer's block goes, I, I write music when I feel very emotional. So when life is good, I don't, I don't have anything to complain about. So <laughs> I guess that's where my writer's block sets in. Like, I haven't really been writing any new songs recently because, I mean, I love the people I'm surrounded by. I, I have a lot of positive things going on in my life right now. And it's, it's definitely very enjoyable, um, although I'm stressed out, as always. Uh, it's still very enjoyable. So I, I don't really have anything to write about currently. Now, you did mention uh, Canada earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very interesting thing I need to unpack. So <laughs> what do you remember about Canada? And is there anything that sticks out in your memory that is important to you? So my relationship with Canada, it's definitely... I guess weird when I try to explain it to other people. I lived there for, well, I was born and then nine months later I moved out and then I never <clears throat> truly lived in Canada since, but all of my family is either there or Ireland, but most of the family that I like talk to on a daily basis lives in Canada. So Canada has always been quote unquote home to me. Although I grew up in South Florida I don't really connect to that environment the same way I do when I go to see my family in Canada or when I drive around that area or when I do the activities in, in those neighborhoods, that always feels more like home to me. So you do go visit because I was like, wait, you have a memory from nine months. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, yeah. I go visit all the time. Obviously I haven't been able to because of COVID. Um, but we're, we're in the home stretch because I know in December, I'm going to go and I'm going to be able to see everyone. And we're all so excited. We'll, we'll email or text about it. We're like, can't wait for December. And we'll like make jokes about it. We're all very excited to finally see each other. Cause it's been like almost, it's been a, over a year now that since we've all seen each other because, well, I mean, obviously everyone who's in Canada has seen each other, but <laughs> my parents, yeah. my brother and I, at least we haven't really seen anyone. And your family that's there how have they reacted to your music? Have you shared your songs with them or at least say, Hey, my, my songs are out. Check them out. Oh, my family is so supportive. It's actually surprising. I mean, like you would think you're like, yeah, my family support me, obviously, but they're just more supportive than I could ever think of. And it's just, it's wild. Like my cousin helps me create my website. Like it's crazy how, uh, how supportive everyone is and, and just ways that you wouldn't even think of. Like my little cousins would sing my song to me or they would ask me to like dance with them or sing with them. Or sometimes people ask me to 
to sing uh we're, we're irish so we hang out at like irish pubs when we're up there and so sometimes when people ask me to sing at those irish pubs and stuff like that and it's just it's immensely supportive for sure once again we're talking to Liv burn here on iowa focus radio and before we let you go a couple more questions when you see the industry i never asked this in this way what if anything surprised you the most when you got into the music industry and and why well i mean i don't think i'm fully in right now so i can't speak (laughs) confidently on it you know i'm still trying to dip my toes into it (laughs) but i mean within re it's it's a shocker but at the same time it's not that surprising the lack of representation of women producers in the industry was really crazy to me. I think what, what was craziest was growing up, learning how to produce this or that it was always engraved in my mind for some reason that a producer was a man and that I had to find a male producer to help me out. And I never for a second thought, about a woman producer, which is why I think it took me so long to start producing myself. And even when I started producing myself, I was the only female producer that I knew. Thanks to TikTok, I've become a lot more aware of all these incredibly brilliant women producers. And now I I know more uh, as I get deeper within the music industry and they connect more. And I, I definitely think they're being more brought to light now and and people are definitely taking advantage of their skills a lot more now but it was it was wild to me when i first figured that out because honestly they kind of slap so i don't know why people aren't utilizing them more but that's just me and you as an artist what would you say is the most fulfilling part of just being an artist being able to create your own you know masterpiece to share with everybody I think it's two parts. One of them is seeing everything that happens in my head come into reality. So seeing a a song that I have only heard in my head come in, like I I can pull it up on my computer and I can listen to it. And it sounds like how I was hearing it in my head before I wrote it. That's wild to me. Or when the visuals come out exactly how I had them in my head, that's wild to me but also just seeing other people react to my music and connect to it. That's the most insane thing to me. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, like you think the same thing that I think that's crazy. I can't believe you think those thoughts too. Um, So yeah, that's definitely wild to me. And you've been in the media, you've been getting block placements and all that for someone who's an artist. I mean, it's always the million dollar question. How do I get placements? How do I get exposure with your experience that you have? What would you say words of wisdom for those who are trying to get their exposure up as far as getting their stuff heard? What would you say to them? Genuinely speaking. Honestly, I would say just do you and do you well find just just do what you love and and keep posting in a way that's genuine and authentic to you and those opportunities will come because that's what happened with me i had a management team reach out to me and things worked out and now i'm getting publicity because of them but i didn't go out of my way for anything it it, it came to me because they saw me posting all the time and doing IGTVs and, and, you know, trying to put myself out there. So, cause you, you got to think about it from a business perspective, people are looking for new artists all the time. You know, that's what an A&R's job is, is to look for artists. So as long as you're just out there doing what's authentic to yourself, people are going to connect to truth and it'll just, it'll just happen. But it's definitely, it definitely takes a lot of patience. You know, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So definitely be patient with yourself. Well, there you have it, man. That was well said. Uh, I want to say 
Once again, you listen to I Am Focus Radio, and we're talking to Liv Byrne. And that's a dope name, by the way. Um, when you are living your purpose and you're, you're pushing yourself, you touch on that a little bit. But when you are zoned, you're, you're, you're locked in. You're in your zone. How do you keep yourself focused on your goals so that way you're not allowing yourself to overthink anything? When it comes to a creative space, I don't overthink. Or if I do, I just, I go back to, I don't know. I I work creatively off of feeling. So whenever I think I'm starting to overthink something, I just take a break and I'm like, okay, what, what am I feeling? Does this feel right? Does it feel like it's that deep? Is it not that deep? Let it go. Or, and then that's just how I, how I operate, especially like when it comes to producing like a specific sound, I'm like, do I like this? Do I not? Does it feel right? If it doesn't feel right, then get it out, you know? And so that's how I work. And that's how I stay on top of my goals and, and stuff like that when it comes to a creative space. Well, how can people keep in contact with you and sh- just support you with your music? Oh, well, I am Liv Burn on all streaming platforms and I am at I am Liv Burn on all social media platforms. Feel free to DM me whenever I try to respond to all of my DMs. But if you want to say hi, want to say what's up, I will be there and I will say what's up to you as well. Well, once again, thank you so much for talking to us, Liv Burn. Right here on I Am Focus Radio, true pleasure having you talking about not just your career, but your path, your life story. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us today. Oh my God, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk to me. I uh, appreciate that, man. But once again, y'all can check it out. Her website is IamLiveBurn.com. Once again, that's IamLiveBurn.com. And just because, just in case you spell it wrong, I'm going to have it in the description. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, once again, thank you for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.